Derby County face up against Sheffield Wednesday at Pride Park Stadium this weekend in what is, in my opinion, a must-win game. Derby County are now one win in, I believe, nine fixtures so far. And it's been a really disappointing run for Derby County in what was supposed to be a much easier period. Now, we're going to look at Derby County versus Sheffield Wednesday. But if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to stay tuned for all of my latest Derby County content. Leave a ram in the comments for the sake of engagement. But shall we get into it? So here we have it then. Three o'clock kickoff on Sunday afternoon. And it's, it's really difficult talking about this game because... If you saw my match day vlog, my reaction to the Swansea game, it was very, very disappointing for myself. And I think for a lot of fans in the performance we put in, and a lot of people are telling me that I was spewing nonsense and that Derby County were really good in the game after the 20th minute. But for me, the only reason that happened was because Swansea didn't have to play. Now, looking ahead to this Sheffield Wednesday game, the most important thing is that we come out the blocks. We have to come out firing and we have to come out fighting. Because if we don't, if you want to treat yourself after such a poor performance, go over and check out Kitbag. There's a ton of Derby County items that have up to 50% off. Use code SCORE at checkout to make sure you get the discount. Go down to the link in the description. Look at all the things that you can get. Pick yourself up something to make yourself smile this evening. I'll catch you in the next part of this video. We fall to the risk of falling into the relegation battle and that is something which I'm sure myself and many other Derby County fans can agree we do not want to happen. Now, if we look at the injury list, David Ozo back into training, Ryan Niambi still out for a significant period and Tawanda Chiwa is also back in training. Uh, Deshaun Bernard looks to be suspended for Sheffield Wednesday. Akin Famiwo looks like he's out and Michael Ehekwe and Olaf Kabaki all look to be out for Sheffield Wednesday. Now, the big call for Derby County will be the return of Jerry Yates. And I personally think it's an absolute no-brainer to bring Jerry Yates back into the side after the most recent performance. And we had no strike. It would have been a really different uh, call if Derby County had gone on to win that game versus Swansea City. Now, if we do go on to look at the recent form of the two sides right now, Derby County have won one in five and ultimately I think that actually stretches to one win in about nine games which is obviously really really disappointing for Derby County. They've picked up five points in five games, two defeats versus Stoke City and Swansea, draws versus Preston and Plymouth and obviously that win versus Coventry City. Sheffield Wednesday on the other hand they're in a pretty similar boat, two wins, two defeats and one draw. Most recently a 2-0 win over Hull City, a draw versus Cardiff City a, a defeat, two defeats, sorry, versus Sheffield United and Watford and a 2-0 win over Norwich City. Now, in my opinion, this is going to be a really big game for Derby County. And when we look at the league table, you're going to understand why. If we scroll down to where Derby County and Sheffield Wednesday are, 13th and 15th respectively, 22 points for Sheffield Wednesday, 20 for Derby County. You can see if you go down to Hull City, sitting on 15 points, there's just five points between Derby County and the drop zone. And there is a massive opportunity for Derby County to slip. But there's also an opportunity for Derby County to get themselves into 10th place and potentially build a further gap and obviously get themselves back ahead of Sheffield Wednesday. Now, we have to be candid in the way we speak and we have to look at the last five games. You look at Sheffield Wednesday, seven points, Derby County, five. There's not all that much difference and there is a possibility that Derby County could come away with a victory in this game. But if we play anything like we did against Swansea, then we're going to be in a real struggle. Sheffield Wednesday have a fairly decent away record, sitting ninth in the division with three wins, one draw and four defeats, collecting 10 points across eight games. Obviously, we know Derby County's away record is very poor. We look at Derby's home form. At one point, we're sitting third or fourth in the table. We're now sitting down in 10th place on 14 points, four wins, two draws and two defeats. And for me, I think we're falling to where we should be in the division. Now, there is a big call to make for Derby County, and that is the potential of a return for David Ozo. A player who is back in training, wasn't ready in time for Swansea City, and I personally don't think he's really ready to play this weekend. I personally think he'll play um, the game after. He may be on the bench this weekend, um, and that's something which... 
is going to be interesting to see if he does end up coming on because I do think he's been a massive miss in the Derby County midfield. He's been very good on the defensive end, was very good on the ball as well and it's a massive call for Paul Warren to bring David Ozo back into the fold but I think it's one which ultimately will need to be made. Now, Corey Blackett-Taylor, a player who a lot of people have been calling for, myself included and I think after last night's performance, I don't think we're going to see him for a while. He's just been very poor for Derby County. He's never really found his stride. And that's something which Paul Warren and the coaching staff are going to have to deal with across the course of the next few weeks and months. Because we head into that busy December period where he's going to need to be influential. He's going to need to make a difference when he's in the team. Because we can't play Mendes Lang and Caden Jackson every game. We don't have another right back to push Kane Wilson up to give one of them a break. So it's either going to be a case of splitting between a 4-3-3 and a 3-5-2 or it's going to be a case of Corey Blackett-Taylor finally finding his feet in Derby County colours which as we all know has been very difficult for him. Obviously picked up that goal versus Norwich. I think he had a decent spell in that game versus uh, Sunderland as well but ultimately he's been very disappointing since signing and Paul Warren spent an entire transfer window clamouring after him, wanting him and he tried to get him in the summer before that and ultimately it just hasn't worked out. This is a miss for Paul Warren in Derby County and it's one which they're going to have to look at and the last 11, uh, if you look at the way we performed against that Swansea City side, it was very, very disappointing. Now, we're going to get ourselves into the lineup builder. We're going to take a look at what I'm predicting Derby County to do. Heading into this game versus, obviously, Sheffield Wednesday. In my opinion, we're going to go with a 4-3-3. And we're going to obviously see, in my opinion, Jerry Yates come back into the fold. We're also, in my opinion, going to see Liam Thompson uh, come back in as well. I think... It, I think it's the best decision for all if Liam Thompson does come back into the fold in that midfield. Now, the big question that I think a lot of people are going to have is what do we do in the back situation? I think the decision between Fozzie and Alder is a 50-50 call. I think both are sort of on similar levels and put in similar performances. I can only see Wilson playing at right back. I don't think Joe Ward is really a right back. I don't necessarily think he has the capabilities of doing the defensive work necessary. Now, there is obviously another option for Paul Warren to go with, and that is obviously the 3-5-2, in which I believe would see Derby County play Dejon Brown in the forward line um, and bring in Nat Phillips. Where is Nat Phillips? Into the back three and stick with the same midfield. And this is obviously the other option which Derby County can go with. And I do think it's a possible option for Paul Warren and for uh, Derby County to go with. Do I think they're going to do it? Probably not. I think they'll stick with the four being at home. But it is obviously a massive, massive call for Paul Warren and a massive, massive call for Derby County about what they are going to do heading into this next game. Obviously, if you look at the fixtures we've got coming up, Leeds, Burnley, Luton and West Brom and then Leeds again before December's out. It's going to be difficult. I can only see one game, really, where we could potentially pick up three points. So, obviously, it's a difficult one. A very, very difficult one. And I think the January window is going to be absolutely massive for Derby County. Now, obviously, there is a lot to talk about and there is more to go into. But if you have not done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell. Hit the like button as well to help my content pop up on your feed. And let's just see what Derby County can do this weekend. We need a big, big change in my opinion. And if you haven't done so already, do go and check out that match day vlog. Let me know in the comments what you thought of that game and uh, what you thought of what I said afterwards. Because I don't really think I was that harsh. I think I criticised what needed to be criticised. And it's going to be interesting to see how it progresses over the course of the next few weeks. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'll catch you in the next one.